Born in LA as Laura Salinger, by her teens she was so obsessed with the English music scene, she changed her name to Bricks after her favourite Clash song, The Guns of Brixton. After discovering a record by The Fall in Chicago, she bumped into the lead singer, Marky e. Smith, literally, as he was on his way back from the bar holding two pints of beer. She married him, joined the band, and the rest is not his story, she says, but hers. In her new book, she talks about how she finally broke free from the man she describes as the Mancunian Castro to reinvent herself and finally take control of her life. What happened when you first discovered the music of The Fall? I was obsessed. It's like nothing I ever heard before. It was the most unique sounding band. The picture, the, the band had no ego. You know, I looked at a picture, it was a blurry picture. You couldn't even tell who was on it. Mostly you'd see men posing on the front of their covers with guitars and this and that. And this band was mysterious, but it was hypnotic and powerful and intellectual. And I, I couldn't believe it. Two weeks later, they were playing in Chicago. And by fate, I ended up meeting them and meeting the singer, Mark Smith. You literally bumped into him. Literally bumped into him. <laughs> That's happened more than once in my life because I met my new husband in the lift at Harvey Nichols. <laughs> yeah. So take me back to you bump into Marky e. Smith yes. and you start a relationship with him. Yes. And very quickly, you're 20, is that right? I am, yes, when just, you moved just to 20, Manchester. just 20, yeah. Manchester surprised you, didn't you? Yeah. I didn't know what to expect when I ended up there. But, and it was, um, well, Grim, actually, in those days, I have to say, I, it was a little bit depressing, <laughs> but <laughs> I grew to love it very much. You know, um, I had a small adjustment period as it was very different from where I'd come from, but I was doing what I loved. I was with a man I loved. I was playing music that I loved. And because of that, I was in such a happy headspace that I didn't even see the dirt and the filth and the rundown building. When you talk about being in the fall, I mean, it doesn't exactly sound like a democracy. Nope, nope, it was very much a dictatorship. But that was the way it worked. Mark Smith ran, ran the band the way he saw fit, and it worked for a long time. It wasn't always pleasant, it wasn't always pretty, but that was the way it worked. And, you know, God bless him. <laughs> There's a lot in the book about being controlled by men and trying to regain some control yourself. With the controlling people, I don't say that Mark Smith controlled me or Nigel Kennedy controlled me. I allowed myself to be controlled by them. It was a choice that I made and I didn't realize that I was in a prison of my own making and all I had to do was open the door. There's a, a terrible, very sad bit in the book about a, a, a rape that you suffered, but your opening to that chapter is we make choices about what to think about. Here, here's the thing about the rape. Um, it, it's something that I, I, I live in denial, right? I, I realize writing this book, I, I bury things a lot. And I do that so that I, I can only think good thoughts and happy thoughts as much as possible. I don't want to sit in um, misery. You know, we're only here in this moment, so why not feel good in this moment? Why do I have to go back and think about something over and over again that's painful? It just brings it up, move on, bury it. But when I was writing this book, I really had to acknowledge it. And it was difficult with the rape because I had never acknowledged it. I had I'd never told my parents and I'd never told my husband, any of them. <laughs> so I had to come clean and tell, and it was upsetting to write about it. But I, this book is not about the rape. I am not unique. One in three people are raped in this world, men, women, and children every day. Um, but the way I chose to deal with it I am going to shut it down now and I'm, I'm not going to let him win otherwise I'll be a victim and I'm never going to think about it again and I'm never going to speak about it again and I just pushed it down and it, yes it did come up from time to time you can never really completely close it down but day to day I managed I thought I managed to go through life uh, without it really affecting me and I think I did a pretty good job if you went back is it possible to say whether you'd do the same thing again? I would do the same thing again I would do the same thing again. But that's for me, that's not for everybody, and it was my circumstance. Every circumstance is different. You've reinvented yourself many times, from music to fashion, and now you're performing again. How good does that feel? I never thought in a million years, 10 years ago, I would 
be standing up on stage holding a guitar. I just thought it, I needed to just age gracefully, not disgracefully. So now I'm just standing up, pulling down the light, challenging through, and shining it out to everybody because, you know, 